Hi, how are you all doing? Hope you're all well. Uh, today I've got for you a watercolour painting tutorial using this picture. This is just something I took while I was out walking one day. Quite a nice little composition. The uh, the only issue I have with it is the centre line of the picture, the horizon, is a little bit too close to the middle of the picture. So I'm just going to drop that down to the lower third of the picture. And then you'll see once we've done that, that fits in uh, quite nicely with the rule of thirds grid that I tend to use quite a lot. Uh, so that'll work out quite nicely. And uh, that will be our composition. So let's just take a moment to divide the picture up into bite-sized pieces. So we'll start with the sky and I'll paint that in one go with uh, two or three washes. Then we've got the foreground, which we'll keep revisiting as we go, adding details each time. Then the far distance with the trees and bushes, we'll try and get all that painted in one go also. Then on to the centre point of the picture, the trees and bull, and we'll try and get those painted in one go also. So that's the plan, and here's the palette we'll be using. It might help to pause the video to write those down. We're using them straight out of the tubes today. Okay, let's do some drawing. So I'm going to start by marking out on the border there where the rule of thirds grid would sit. And this is going to give us a good idea of where to position the different elements of the picture in relation to each other. And uh, first line we're going to do is going to be the horizon now if you recall we'd uh, dropped that line down from the center of the picture down to the lower third uh, so that's a really good starting spot to figure out where the tree trunks are going to go and uh, if you look at the picture you'll see that uh, they sit roughly one third to the left and one third to the right so uh, that line's really, really useful starting point. And now speed things up a little bit and uh, just a very loose sketch of uh, the tree trunks and things will start to fit in around those. The paper we're using today is 120 pound cold pressed. Um, it's been pre-stretched by myself and uh, the size is just around the A4 size, which is 210 by 297 millimeters. And I'm using a Faber-Castell clutch pencil with a 2B lead in it. And they are great little pencils. So that's the drawing pretty much done. Just put a couple more lines on there. And uh, I'm happy with that. And uh, here's the final drawing. And let's get painting. So we're going to start by soaking the sky area with a mop brush. Plenty of water on there, not being too precious about it. Let that soak in for a moment and then straight in with the cobalt blue. Uh, again, just dabbling that on there, not being too precious at all about it. Leave that for a moment to settle in and run. Then I've taken some Payne's Grey and uh, mix that with the uh, cobalt blue. And I'm just dropping that in really loosely into the first wash whilst it's wet. You can see the texture that that adds to the sky. That's really, really nice. So we're just going to dabble that in. And then once we've done that, leave that to dry completely and come back in with a stronger cobalt blue with a hint of Payne's Grey in it. And leave that to dry also. So moving on to the foreground, we're going to put uh, some water down first and then a very, very light wash of raw sienna. Um, just dabble that in there don't be too precious about it you're going to give it a bit of texture and uh, just let that do its thing and then we're going to come back in with a second stronger raw sienna wash and you can see how that adds texture that we can build on later on so once that's dried completely we're going to move on to the horizon tree line using olive green For this we've switched to a thinner brush and we're just going to stipple the tree line in really really loosely very lightly and uh, that gives us a lovely tree line effect. As you work along the tree line don't worry too much about putting too much texture in 
Good. Our next move is going to be to add sap green to the olive green, and that will give us depth and texture. What I'm also doing is just adding the lightest wash of Van Dyke brown to the green, and that gives a little bit more to the texture of the trees. And then I'm following that up with the sap green towards the bottom, and that grounds them really nicely on the horizon. So get the bushes painted to a point where you're happy with them and then you'll see a white line in front of the bushes which is a row of tall grasses and uh, I'm just going to work in initially with some raw sienna on that line and then um, a touch of green in there as well and that will tie those two elements in together. I'm just going to come back to the trees and add a little bit more green just to break up the tree line a little bit more, make it a little bit more convincing. So we come back to the foreground now and we're going to do a wet in wet wash of sap green and raw sienna. And that's going to fill in ready for us to apply a few more details. Let that dry completely. So once that's dry, we come back in with the fine brush and using a bit of sap green and a little bit of uh, raw sienna just to add some grass details. Now the technique I'm using here is just to apply the green to the paper and then flick upwards with the brush and that gives you a really nice grass effect. If you mix the green to different strengths, you can get quite a nice variety uh, of grasses and this uh, sap green really does work well. Once you've uh, added the paint to the paper, if it's still wet, you can add just a little bit of water just to bring the, uh, the strength of the color down a little bit. You can see I'm doing it there. Now, don't overthink painting the grass. You don't need all the detail in there. You just need a suggestion of grass clumps and maybe a, a, a variation in the texture of the field. I'm going to work in some stronger sap green with a bit of Van Dyke brown at the base of the trees and around the bull. And that's really going to help us with the suggestion of a shadow cast by the trees. Then tidy up by working in a little bit more detail towards the back of the picture. I'm going to add a uh, blue wash to behind the tree just to knock back that white area. So we're going to paint the branches and the trunks of the tree now using Van Dyke Brown. This is a very simple technique of painting the trunk and the branches from the ground upwards. It's uh, always better to paint them in the direction which they're growing. And as we're going along, I'm varying the strength of the paint. And I've also dropped in a little bit of Payne's Grey just to help with shadows. This technique is so easy. It's definitely worth practicing. And uh, as you get to the top of the branches, top of the tree, just a simple flick outwards will uh, finish off the branches uh, really nicely. Now the bits I'm painting here are the bits that will pop through the foliage. Now, as with any watercolour, try not to overthink or overwork the painting. All that we're doing with watercolour really is suggesting what's in the scene or what's happening in the scene. And that's our own creative interpretation of what we see. As you're painting any tree, just remember to uh, add as much variety to the branches as you can. And that's where the character of the trees comes from. So I've worked the tree trunks now to a point where I'm happy with them. I'm then going to start painting the foliage using a wet onto dry paper wash in sap green. And that's uh, going to give me the form of the tops of the trees where all the growth is. And uh, just keep working that in nice and loose, nice and rough and then uh, follow that in while it's still wet with some olive green. Then while those two are settling, I'm going to get some sepia and drop that in just as shadow on the underside of the foliage. And uh, that gives it a nice brown shaded uh, area. So whilst that's drying, we come back to the foreground. I'm going to start working on the shadows cast by the foliage around the bull and at the base of the tree. Again, using a little bit of um, Van Dyke Brown in the shadows and working up the foreground detail as a whole. 
Again, we're only using the four colours we've used previously, which are sap green, olive green, raw sienna and van dyke brown. You'll notice that we've used these colours consistently throughout the picture and I think that gives it a really nice tonal consistency. I'm only using a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, not a lot, just a little bit in places to uh, add shadow to the uh, the grass clumps. You'll notice as well that uh, this layer of paint is being added to the dry watercolour paper. Um, I think if it was wet at any point like this, you wouldn't be able to get the, the definition with the grass. I think you guys have probably earned a break from uh, my voice for a little while. So while I'm painting the foreground, I'm uh, I'm going to be quiet. And just uh, while you're watching, just think about how you would uh, paint a picture like this. And uh, if there's anything else you would do differently. If there is, obviously comment below. I'd love to hear from, me, from you all. And I'll uh, speak to you in a minute. Hello again. You can see that uh, the foreground's coming to completion, so uh, I'm thinking now uh, we'll leave that and we'll start working on uh, the bull. This bit is actually surprisingly simple to do. All that we're doing is using light to dark washes and uh, building up the layers until uh, we have the form and uh, the shadow right. I think it's at this point that most people are likely to get a little bit nervous about painting a living animal. Um, you know, whether it ends up looking like a uh, bull or a dog or a horse or whatever, it, it doesn't really matter. The main thing here is that you're doing the painting and you're enjoying it. To be honest, if it looks like a horse or a dog, tell people it's a painting of a horse or a dog under the tree. It really doesn't matter. They will never know. So I'm happy with that. It's a simple shape with simple shades and it tells you what it is. So uh, we'll leave it at that. So I'm just going to put some finishing touches to the shadow to tie it all in together and I think that is finished. Well thanks for watching folks, I really do appreciate it. Hopefully this has uh, encouraged you to pick up a paintbrush or pencil and start being creative. Drop a comment below to let me know what you think or just to say hello. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. There's lots more videos coming. And uh, if there's anything that I can help you out with, any videos you'd like to see me make, then uh, let me know.